Hello, Mike here again. Welcome back to the bench. Um, somebody was wanting to know about gas rams and converting over and how you do it and um, different things. So I have some more information freely given out to you that will help you out. And then he wanted to know about the end of the Hatson 95. Um, this is what we're going to use today. Uh, what, you, what, what you see here, you can use in the Hatsons 125, 135, and uh, the 95. And then you can basically take some of the information uh, that I'm going to share with any other air rifle that you do. So, um, geez, I got a lot to cover. I'm going to try to hurry it up, but. One of the things I want to cover real quick, and I'm going to throw this in just to get it out, is the, um, this is a piston from a 95. And there's a lot of guys who've never seen a piston being put on. And um, give, give me a second here. First of all, you got, this is the new one. It just came the other day. Um, if you have the old one, they're, they're real stiff and they're, they're worthless, so you're going to want to take it off and get a new piston seal. You just take a small screwdriver like that and wedge it down between the bottom. And you have to be really careful because, you know, they're not going to want to give. And then work the seal up and around, up and around, and up and around. And eventually just work it and pry it until it comes off. The newer ones that you buy are a lot easier to get off obviously than than the original type that are crappy from the factory and then when you want to put this um, seal when you get your new seal to put it on just grab yourself some hot water like in a container and and get some hot water let your tap run get it hot then stick this in your microwave for about two minutes right take it out and then drop your seal in there and let it sit okay and while that's doing that, you want to prep your, your piston real quick. And what I do is I get my favorite tool out, and that's the Q-tip. And I'll get some type of oil, some type of lubricant. Here it just happens to be some shock oil. And I, you prep your piston button. Just, just run a little swipe around that like that. And then put a little bit more on this for when your piston seal is ready to be taken out of the hot water. Put another little dab of dewy on here. Now, uh, I don't have hot water. This is actually cold water from the other night. And when I put this on, I remember that somebody wanted to know how to do it. So just for the sake of showing somebody something, that's what I, that's what's going on here. Just take your needle nose and get it out of there because you don't want to burn yourself. And at this point, now you want to kind of work a little quickly. So, no big deal. Stuff is not rocket science. Take it and pat it down, the front and back, and then the inside. Okay, and then swipe it. Once, once you got the center, the, the thing patted down dry and the inside dry, swipe it with your, with your lube like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take this. What do I have here? I guess that's it and put you over here because if you can see my shop is pretty much a mess I just got things everywhere I got my hands involved in too much stuff and uh, anyway so this is what you do no you don't want to do that <laughs> okay and we're back but you should have, uh, depending upon what rifle you have, I don't know, you know, you should have a mallet. This, this mallet here is too big, but it, it'll do the job. It's one that I have available. Anyway, the, the, the seal on your piston, right, there's your parachute end, right? We all know that faces towards your barrel. The flat end goes towards the, 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 um, the piston itself and seats there. Um, you're going to need a, a surface you can work. And then you just grab your piston and you want to take this push down to keep your work on the bench. And you're, you're trying to dig this down and into the piston, but down and in and on an angle back. So that you're, you're kind of squishing the piston from an angle, like a 45 degree angle, if you're following me. 
and you're pushing down, but back at the same time, trying to elongate that piston a little bit by manipulating the round part of this edge into it. And if you, I don't know what type of piston you have, but if you have a slot like that, be very careful because those slots can, can be sharp. You gotta watch it when you work with air guns because you can really hurt yourself. This one's really beautiful. It's really nice. They're, it's not sharp at all. It's just nice. At any rate, so you take this edge here and lean down like on a 45 degree or whatever, and you, you push down and back, down and back this way a little bit, trying to elongate and get more of the button of that piston down in there. Now, this is not hot. It's only been done once last night, and, and it's going to kind of look like this. And you can also rotate this out of your way so you're not going to slice yourself on it if you have a sharp cocking slot. Just be aware of it. So now you're, you're taking the corner here, and you're going down, down here to put the pressure on the wood, right? Otherwise, you're just going to slip all over the place. So you're going to go down and back, down and back this way, and then start to teeter this way and stretch it and snap it in there like that. Now there's other ones where you're gonna get so far with the new seals, and then when you get so far, blah, 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 and you can't take it anymore, then grab your mallet and try to hold what you did gain on it and then smack it in the back and that'll pop it through. That'll pop it in place. And that's how you put your seal on. So now you saw that, um, there you go. Now, now you see how it was done. At any rate, let's get this 95 piston back out of the way. And um, you should have seen it in the other films, but since we're talking about gas rams and somebody wanted to know, the back of this 95 model is different than the 125s and 135s. So when you take the end of your receiver off and stuff like that, this is what you're going to wind up with. You have your safety sits right on top of this de-dent ball, which sits on top of a spring. And of course the spring has a little housing to sit into. So if you put a little lube where the spring is, that'll usually keep that spring from popping out. And then this has a little grooves like that, right? That's pick a groove, whichever one you want, to go into the, uh, the de-dent ball. So that goes like this in one of the one of the notches, whatever you want to call it, or groove, and then it just gets pushed down like that. But this one here, the ball fell out, so you gotta take your time. This this is not the original ball either. Mine didn't even come with a ball. So there, you line up the groove and sit it on top there, and then and then push it down like that. And then to get it back in your receiver, what I do is take an electrical tie and then um, go around it and squeeze it so that it stays together. And that may leave this end flipping up a little bit. But that will leave, leave your hands free. So when you go back in your receiver, I don't know what you're doing, whether it's a gas ram or a spring, when you get up to the receiver, you just have to make sure you guide this up a little bit so that it's ready in position and it's not jamming and hitting your receiver. So you kind of guide this in if it's not flat all the way. And that's all you do on that. And then when you get up in there, then you can cut your electrical tie free and then get the rest of it in there. But that's what a 95 has. It's the same deal as the Turkish Patriot, by the way. And I really love these safeties. And the safeties, you push your thumb in and to, to take them all safe. I just really love them. But anyway, that's it. So let's get on with this. Um, they also wanted to know um, what we have for, for wh where to buy the rams and what rams to use. So the Turkish Magnums, the 125s and 135s will take the Crossman Ram, um, which is inside the Benjamin XL rifle series. So you look up the Benjamin rifle on Crossman's website, the XL, Benjamin XL, and then um, buy the RAM from that rifle. The parts are um, reasonable, the shipping's reasonable, and the RAM, 
actually is on par with a decent commercial RAM. I know because I did, I have the commercial RAMs. I got one here, which is used for the 95. I bought this during test and I never used it. And I'm going to tell you right now, for the money, don't waste your time with the commercial RAMs. These are on par with the commercial RAMs. You get a little bit more oomph out of the commercial RAMs. The cocking's going to be harder. Some of them you can, can you can have them filled up to your different bar levels. I've been through all that. I'm telling you right now, save your money. Go with the Crossman Ram. It's much more suited for the rifle, and for what you're getting out of it, it's close enough. Sometimes you can chase stuff down and only still, and at the end you're still coming up empty for for what you put into it. Anyway, let's let's move this on. Um, now the Hats in 95 model, if you want to ram it and it was a Springer. That'll take the smaller size RAM, and that RAM will be from the Benjamin Titan or the Crossman Nitro Venom rifle. Those series rifles that have the smaller RAMs, they'll fit your hats in 95. And it's the same thing with your other rifles. If you have other rifles, if you have a mid-sized rifle, that's the RAM you would want, the smaller RAM. But it's up to you. You got to check out to see, um, and that's what we're going to go in today. How do you know how to check this out? And I'm going to show you that right now. Um, let me get rid of this stuff here. Too much stuff here. This is actually an XL RAM, but I, I modified it way back, and basically uh, it was no good anyway. And I, I keep it around the shop for different things that I want to use it for if it ever comes up. You know, I might stick this in a drill chuck or something and do something here, do something. I don't know. But what I'm going to do today, because I don't have the XL RAM. And so to give you a decent mock-up, I cut a piece of dowel that this will be actually like an XL RAM in length. There's an XL RAM here, but the shaft was cut. So I made this a little longer to um, copy what would normally be something where the XL RAM would normally be. And that's what we're going to do. Now, if you don't want to learn what I'm going to show you, that's fine. That's understand. You can do whatever you want with this information. This is for somebody who actually really wants to know. Maybe you have a different air gun. You don't know what RAM. You don't even know how much your your piston travel is going to be. But anyway, if you just have the Hats of 95, um, you can wind up getting a steel insert. Get some steel round stock. It's a cleaner method to do it. You can get that, I don't know, you can get that uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, tractor supplies. They have round steel round stock. Or you can, you know, find something to online to order stuff if you want. But uh, if you get the round stock and you make the divot for the pivot on your RAM, okay, then your RAM goes in there like that. You don't need it real deep. You just need enough for this to seat into. Because once this is all in play and in in there, like this, and then the back is set inside the adapter, and everything is in order, there's there's no play for this to be skipping and hopping and jumping off of the little divot that you made. So you do need a divot. You don't need a dot. You need a divot for this to rest into. Okay but you don't want the divot deep. So let's get into what's going on and then uh, we'll get right into it. Well, first thing you got, I got this all apart and go to the other videos if you want to learn how to work on the other stuff. So I have for the inside of the piston, a steel divot adapter, the, whatever you want to call it, the pivot adapter. And then the other end, I have this Delring piece that I make up and it sits inside the ram the ram sits inside it like that and it can turn see that it doesn't have a lot of movement this way or back and forth so that locks it in but it's not tight and it can still freely twist so that's what i make for that and the top see the top i don't know if you can see that or not is tapered and there's a reason for that 
So let's see, if you put this trigger block back into the end of your receiver and push it down, and we'll stick this adapter on. Um, now you can see what's going on here, right? Your, your sear there is clearing. So your adapter now will not interfere with that sear. So you don't need to make stuff for your gun and then find out it isn't going to work. That's why I'm showing you this. And I used to pin mine, see. Um, you see the little hole in there? I used to pin mine. And there's a hole here. I used to pin these so they cannot turn. And the flat spot was on top all the time. See the clearance? Well, I don't need to, you don't have to pin them, so I don't do them anymore. This can rotate a little bit. This one's actually done a little bit too much. This I did for the video. I, I make these up in a bag, and but they're not ground down, and I quickly ground it down to the show and tell video. But what happens is if you if you grind it down from the top part back on a slight angle, and I do that. If somebody wants to buy adapters from me, I have them. I'll make them up for you. But um, you grind them down enough so that the sear is, is, is not being interfered with. And the, the, this here will not be able to make it spin or turn. Okay? So let's get that out of the way. All right, well, anyway, I got this all apart, and your piston's in, in the gun. Uh, you want to see what, what, you want to know what type of piston your gun takes, okay? So this is how you figure that out. That's on this model. You're going to have to figure it out a little differently on your model because you're obviously going to have a different trigger. Well, the piston here is already in. If you're going to do any measuring on the travel of your piston, then you got to have make sure your piston is all the way back where it belongs. So what I did for the Hatson is basically you have you have the sear in here, right? And you kind of want to know. You got to need to know something. You need, you need something for a reference to know how much you have for your piston travel. So in a normal piston, in case you didn't know it. It'll come back, and then the sear will hop up and jump into that and hold the piston back until she's ready to fire, okay? So you know when this is at this point, this is already cocked fully, and it's, it's where it's going to stop. So in this rifle, if you notice where the edge of the sear is, where my finger's touching, right, that's going to catch that piston, it's pretty much even with the edge of this trigger block. See that? You're going to just draw a straight line across. So now going by that, if you stick this in your rifle, put a pin in it to hold that receiver and where it needs to be. And then take your trigger block like that and stick it in here. Make sure you're down all the way and put a pin through that. These pins are choppy. See if I have a different one that's a little bit better. We'll put a little lube on there. And there. Alright, so now you have the end of the receivers in and this block is down and, and uh, the block is locked in, the trigger block. And so where the face of this was, because now you know that's where that sear edge was that we talked about, scribe a line here. And I've already did that, but scribe a line right here. Okay. 
So I scribed a line here. I don't think you can see it. It's actually a little bit less. It needs to be, it needs to come over a little bit more. But we're not going to play tit for tat here, and we're not going to play Adams. Scribe a line where that sear edge was. Once you have your line scribed in there, pull that, pull that housing back out of there. So now you know this. You know when you cock this piston, it's gonna travel from here all the way back to that scribed line, and that's when the sear is gonna engage, right? So take a tape and measure from the inside of the sear catch to that scribed line. And in this case, that'll be something like four and five eighths. And a metal ruler really works nice, but look, just take and, and this is this is the edge we're talking about. We're not talking about the face here of this piston. We're talking about the inner edge that catches your sear because we're using the sear on the trigger, this very edge as a reference. So you measure that. And I'm coming up with like, uh, well, you should go by the one because obviously the one is clean. Now, if you use a tape like this, it's going to be on an angle. And I don't particularly like that, but this will do. I'm about four and five eighths. Look, we're going from the one now, okay? So that's four and five eighths to we lined up with that scribe line. So that tells me that the piston is going to travel in this particular rifle at least four and five eighths. So if you're shopping around for pistons, and if that's the route you're going, and you're looking online at the specs and all that, you need that means the piston you need, the, the, the ram's arm is going to have to travel more than four and five eighths. At that point, you're gathering information from stem to stern, how long the whole thing is, how thick the body is, um, you know, how much uh, PSI it holds or bar fill. But the other thing is, is you don't want to know how much travel that that ram's giving you that you're trying to purchase or buy. Now, I'm just throwing this out there. I really highly recommend that you just use the Crossman rams, like I said. But at any rate, so you have four and five-eighths of piston travel here. And then that's the one thing you need to know. So normally how these, how these gas rams are working out is, for some reason, it's working out really good, even in the commercial rams. Because we know they didn't make them for the air guns, right? But the, you can find them where they actually work out perfect. So, in other words, if you had the one for, say I had the XL RAM here. Um, no, let's, let's go with this way. Say I had a commercial RAM. I'll find one that at least has, they'll give, you'll find it probably gives you about either five um, inches of, of travel or like 490, almost five inches. And at that rate, if, you, if that's the, what you're finding, then that's the one you can use. So you have four and five eighths of travel here, that's a given, and a little bit more, because you know how it is when you cock something, you always have that little push back before you hit the dead end, right? So in other words, the sear will engage, and you know if you push back on your, on your barrel, you'll get a little bit more, that's really going nowhere. So I'm telling you, this is what you need for your cock, and you need to figure out where your travel is. And then when you get a ram, your ram would have to be more than that. So what I'm saying is when you get a ram, it seems to be that they work out really right on. So normally uh, the ram for this would actually have about almost five inches of, of the uh, arm that it can actually travel before it bottoms out. So there's a couple things, I'm not an expert, but the, it's not good to totally bottom out a ram all together. You're supposed to leave, I think, um, like one millimeter or something at least. But that's from old references of things I kind of remember. So at any rate, now you know you have travel of four and five eighths. So let's get into what's going on here. So 
Here's what you're going to do. Let's just take the end of this receiver out. Here's the day I'm going to use that, and it's going to go down to the bottom of the piston. Say I made up an adapter. I find out on these 125s and 135s that the adapter's no more than 3 8 inch thick. And then make the divot just enough for the end of the ram to, to dip into. Because you want to keep as much travel that you can. You don't want to suck up your travel by just using an adapter that's too thick and too deep. So if you stick your ram in an adapter and say it, the adapter, the ram drops down in a little bit, you just lost that much on, on your, uh, your ram's travel. And like I said, a lot of these rams are made, the one you find that will work, the travel is just, you know, like if we needed four and five eighths here, then the, the maximum travel is going to be like 490 on a typical ram. So you can't be wasting your travel on this ram is what I'm saying. So anyway, let's move on. So now you have that figured out. You've made a divot. Stick that divot down at the bottom of your, of your hole there. And then look inside with a flashlight. Make sure the divot's facing up. The divot should go, and you should be made the divot so that it fills up the, the piston, but it doesn't bind, and it, and it can rotate. Like, if, it, if it's in there wrong, you can jerk it like that, and it'll flip around. But you don't want it real loose, because you don't want this thing to be slopping back and forth more than it needs to. So give it a little play, but not much and make sure it doesn't bind, um, but mostly try to fill up the area as much as possible, okay? But at any rate, we don't, since I don't have the piston here, I'm just gonna show you with a stick. So you'll take your piston, you'll drop it down, and uh, if you're really gonna get into this, uh, when you're ready to actually put your piston in, your gas piston when you're done and ready and you're all set up, get a little silicon shock oil and coat the rod just a little bit on your fingers and go back and forth and coat the rod before final assembly. So then anyway, um, since this is not the full size proper ram, I'm using the dowel. This will be in the bottom of the receiver. You can look down over the flashlight. It's 50-50 which way it's going to go. If it's not facing right, just jerk it up and down until it flips itself over. And don't put any lube in the bottom of this because that'll keep this thing from flipping. That'll cause a little vacuum and you won't be able to break it. Not without a lot of going through a bunch of junk to get it out. So don't put any lube on it, you really don't need it. Stick it down in here. Look in the flashlight, make sure it's facing you up. And then why it's in the vertical position, because you gotta be careful that it doesn't fall down on you again, all right? It's just common sense, and then stick your gas ram in there. And then, it doesn't take much to get the gas ram to hit the center of your pivot and drop in. You could just stick your finger in like this while it's in the vertical position, give it a couple little wiggles like that, and you can feel it drop in if it's not dropped in already. And the other thing, if it's dropped in right, when you look down in there, you'll be able to see all around that gas piston because the, the center divot is kind of keeping it center, believe it or not. So you can tell, you'll be able to look in here and tell, wiggle it and you'll be able to tell as well. So just to get the sake going here, um, now you know what's going on so far. Pretend that's your gas ram, right? And you know where the back of here we made the slot, that's where your sear's gonna catch. Well, if you notice on this piston, where the sear is here, you have this much material going there and you have you have that in the front of your piston. That's basically 5 sixteenths, if I remember correctly. So let's see what that is. Yeah, it's almost 5 sixteenths. We'll call it 5 sixteenths. So from the line you scribed here, go 5 sixteenths this way and scribe another line right into the side of your welded bracket. Right now you know when this thing is, is caught in the trigger sear, now you know where the very face of this piston is going to be sitting in this area. 
Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because um, whatever's going on with your RAM that you're using, your adapter cannot sit on that RAM like this. It cannot sit in the RAM like that and be in that area that you just scribed. Because if, if it is that area that you just scribed, uh, you're never gonna be able to get this gun together and cock it. It's gonna interfere. Because that's where your piston comes down, right? That's, that's exactly what we figured out. We figured out how long, how far your cocking goes back, and then the face of this piston goes back over here. Now you see what you've done with whatever you added for the bottom of your piston, your gas piston pivot, and now where the end of your gas ram is. So that lands where this area is that we marked, you now know that's no good. And it even needs a little space in front of that what you marked because you know when you cock your rifle, right, you get that little bit going back. So there, that's your telltale guide. Now the rest from here is you, you put your end of your uh, end of the receiver in and then stick your pin in okay so now the end of the receiver is in um, you've, you have to be careful because you've had this gas piston in the divot and you didn't do nothing that made it jerk and fall out Otherwise, you're going to get a false reading. And you don't want to have to do this stuff like over again, okay? So now you look down there, you see, geez, what do we have going on there? Ain't much of a space, but at least now you know what you're dealing with. You measure that space, right, between the end of the ram and the, the face of that receiver. Don't worry about the tit. Just worry about the face of that receiver end and the end of your ram measure that get an idea of what that measures and then you can make your adapter from there and don't worry about being perfect as far as thickness make it a little bit bigger okay because at this point what's going to happen now you're going to make your adapter or buy an adapter you're going to stick it on you're going to stick it in here carefully so it doesn't fall off. And then once you get it up to the back of the piston, you can then take it vertical and shake it back and forth while you twist this and push down a little bit. That way you'll get it to snap on the bottom of your ram. And at that point, now you'll see wherever this is, how far it's sticking out, how, maybe it's, maybe, just to say, maybe it's not sticking out at all. And if that's the case, you need to make another adapter because you need to have preload on your RAM. So the idea of preload is at least an eighth, no more. Um, so if it's sticking out like that, then you have to take your adapter, grind it down, sand it down to make it thinner on the back. Stick it back in there and do the same thing again and see what you got. See how far in you are. You want about an eighth. And you don't eye it, you measure it. Okay? So if you took a tape measure, and if you measured this, you'd have a real eighth. Okay? And it's critical because, like I said before, um, with your grass ram arm, you only have so much... Um, travel on your ram these rams are pretty much on the money you know like I said if you have four and five eighths of travel and you find a ram that's going to fit your rifle specs you'll find that the travel that it's giving you is just under five inches so you can't afford to be sucking up your travel off your ram so that's why I said make the preload no more than an eighth and then watch out how deep you make your divot that your ram sits in so at any rate, now you finally sand it back, you have an eighth inch of, of your thing sticking out, everything's double checked, you're in right. You have to double